it's, it's a really fascinating topic. Drugs right. always are, obviously. <laughs> um, but, but talk about what you guys are doing and, and why. Okay, well, the film is called Take Your Pills, and it's premiering on Netflix next Friday. Mm -hmm. And it's several years in the making. It's the brainchild of this child, mm -hmm. this young woman right here. Uh, and I think it's a really interesting, exciting, and important documentary. And Christina can talk about why she wanted to make it, and then I can jump in. Okay, Were you used, were, what was the inspiration? Um, the inspiration was that I went to college uh -huh. and um, I was just in shock at the amount that Adderall, Ritalin, all those kind of stimulating drugs were incredibly over-prescribed and overused, uh -huh. both for prescription for academics and also recreationally. Um, and after four years there, a lot of my friends and I were talking about post-grad life and if we envisioned Adderall in our life after that. And did you did you use Adderall? Were you yeah, using I used Adderall. I was diagnosed with ADD though when I was like probably like six or oh yeah. Yeah. What yeah, did but, she do when she ran around a lot? What, she ran around. <laughs> also, she she struggled with kind I'm of definitely like a creative and learner. Kind of learning. Yeah, she was much more of a creative learner than the school that we had her in. Right. And um, so you know, educators always come to parents and say, you know, you should think about medication, think about medication. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then we got to high school and, you know, you're falling behind and there's a lot of pressure to stay on it. So in a very low dose, she started taking, it was like in high school, correct? Yeah, I was in high school for about like a year. I started taking Adderall and I didn't like any of the side effects. Right. So, but I went through extensive testing to get right. on that. Right. So Focalin or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah, well, they do in high school and in grade school, they make you go through a whole process. No, no, my son, they tried to prescribe it to my son. I okay. declined. Yeah, so I declined for several years and then in high school we didn't. And then, of course, what happens is you go off to college and parents have no idea what's going on in college right. or what kids are taking and to, to, no to focus, testing. to stay awake, to go to sleep, and there's no testing and everybody's getting it and there's a whole black market. And I think that was really your impetus to kind of talk about the epidemic right. that is Adderall across not just schools, but in workplaces and startups yes, and Wall Silicon Street Valley for sure. and everywhere yeah. you know, that, yeah. to, to keep up. And I think this film really kind of focuses on that so, in a great way. Charlotte, so you, were, you, you had been prescribed it to, what, get you to do your homework better? Or what was the idea that you were... No, just help with focus. Focus. Yeah. Right. That you didn't have executive function, right? Is that, yeah, that exactly. That's the, yeah. Which I don't know why a 16-year-old needs executive function, but okay. Um, I think that's a really good question yeah. to put in front of educators now who all kind of educate in the same way. Right. Right. And so some places have the opportunity to go to more creative learning. Some people, you know, uh, do homeschooling. Some people now, and I think in the last couple of years, we have much more of an emphasis on social and emotional learning letting kids do meditation, think of different ways to help kids learn. Yeah. Um, but there is an epidemic of this drug, and it's not just in schools. And I think what, uh, what I thought Christina's point was so good is that people have their, their whole identity is wrapped up in this drug, right. Right? right? It makes them successful. They get a lot of praise for it. Right. There's a lot of like, at a girl, at a boy. Right. And then the idea of like, uh-oh, if I go off of it, Will I be able to work 24/7? So you used it in college, right? Yeah. And for what? For what was you had you had gone off of it for studying, or was it something that you felt was necessary? No, I didn't use it in high school. I switched high school, so I went to a more creative high school, which mm -hmm. was a lot better for me. And then I went to Georgetown, and I loved it, but it was definitely a lot more demanding, at least in my high school. And mm -hmm. so I used it then throughout those four years. Um, and, and everybody was using it. Every like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not just in Georgetown, obviously. No. Yeah, no, across, it's everywhere. Yeah, right. Right. across the, yeah. the, the breadth of the country. Yeah. And that's why I think this film is so important because I think parents should watch it. I think kids who are on it. And I don't think parents are spoken to about the addictive quality of Adderall. Mm -hmm. And I think this film really focuses on that really well. Mm -hmm. And um, there are all different kinds of stimulants and how hard it is to get off of it right. once you're on it. Did you, st did, did you stop in college or did you? I stopped after college. I actually had a routine blood test and mm -hmm. my liver enzymes came back out of whack and so they were like, you stop it immediately. Mm -hmm. And no one had ever told me beforehand, this is something you may want to get checked up. This is a potential side effect, nothing of that sort. Mm -hmm. um, so I was in complete shock. And yeah, so I had immediately stopped. It was 
took like about a year, I would say, almost of kind of getting back on my feet and. And what did it make you feel that coming off of it and what it did for you when you used it? Because it is attractive. A lot of yeah. you know, Silicon Valley use it all the time. Or, or, or they're doing nootropics, yeah. and we'll talk about right. that. Right. And, which is just a... So what look. did it do for me? Yeah. What well, it you? was great. I mean, it, was, it helped me in school. I was getting great grades, getting a pat on the back by all of my professors. Mm -hmm. um, helped me. I would say, like, that's probably the biggest way that it helped me, but it made me feel, it, it makes you kind of feel like you can do anything, mm -hmm. like whatever you want to do, you can kind of do it and you're in such a zone. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So what's it like without it? That's a great question. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> um, the first year was very difficult because I was like coming to terms with dealing with a new person. I describe it as somewhat of like an identity crisis I went through mm -hmm. and I went back to kind of doing things that I did in high school which was more art, creative things. Um, and since then, I went to Parsons for interior design and architecture, which was great because that's what I was doing in high school. And now I'm working in health and wellness, which mm -hmm. is right up my alley of trying to like get the message out and trying to show people that these have a lot of really dangerous side effects that you're not told about and not warned about. And yeah. And and did you use any of these? No, I, no. I didn't. no, no, I, I, didn't. I, I wasn't remember. kind of. When I was going to school, well, people using uppers and, and yeah, <laughs> not at the sacred the convent of the Sacred Heart. They were okay, all right. <laughs> or, or at least well, just I didn't nuns, get the just memo. The nuns, just maybe ahead. the nuns were. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I think you those know in the film. Crazy. Oh, but those nuns are awesome. Yeah, I mean, I actually I have to shout it out to the nuns because right. I was educated by the nuns. I know some people had bad experiences with the nuns. No, I don't have a bad. Experience. You didn't have a bad experience. Okay, I've never good. dealt with nuns. But go you ahead. never have dealt with nuns. No. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, I'm the you. bad Catholic sitting oh here. Oh my God, how could you never have dealt with nuns? I just didn't. I, I don't oh know why God. we're off topic here. I don't okay. know, but that's because. Uh, uh, but anyway, we could do a whole show on nuns. But, okay. Uh, no, it didn't. And I think in the film it talks about how in the '60s there was a real stigma about any of these drugs and now there's none. In fact, it's the opposite. It's so common. Everybody, you know, there's a black market for it. Everybody's trading it. And most importantly, I think everybody feels, and certainly all the young people that I talk to, feel like they can't survive without it. Mm -hmm. They can't be in the startup culture. They can't be on Wall Street. They can't be, you know, in any, in Silicon mm -hmm. Valley without it because what we're expecting of people right. is to work 24 seven. And you right. know that extremely well. And I think the film really talks about, and I think puts a real focus on that all of us now are human capital. And mm -hmm. parents with their kids, they see them at one and two and they're worried about where they're gonna go to school. Are they gonna fit in? What is their IQ? What college are they gonna get into? And I think, you know, the film kind of lays out that well, have we lost our mind? into that? That you, you declined, initi your, your initial thing was to decline to well, drug yeah. your child, right? Well, uh, yeah, and I don't look at it as drug my right. child, but, right. I, but I think that's part yeah. of the thing is, you know, uh, teachers tell you your child needs a tool, your child, and there are a lot of children who do, right? Mm -hmm. That they have a learning disability or, and that will help them focus and mm -hmm. get out of school. So yes, you have um, misgivings, you have, uh, you try to research the best you can, you try to talk to other parents, but nobody talked to me about the incredible addictive qualities of it. And there are different kind of stimulants, some of which mm -hmm. are addictive, some of which are not. Right. And then also, you know, when you have a kid that goes off to college and you, you, control, and right? you don't have control, so if they're doing a very small dose under your house, Lord knows what goes on. Right. And I was not really aware of the black market in college. I was not aware of the depth or the breadth of it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't aware uh, really of how many kids took it and then had to take other things to come down, to, you know, to go out, to ease social anxiety, to help with anxiety. And I think the doctor can... Uh, Which we're gonna... Yeah, no, but I'm just saying he can you know, talk to that. And I think the film does a really good job of laying that out, asking you know, lots of doctors uh, you know, psychiatrists talking about like, what are we really doing? Mm -hmm. And also the ease of which this is prescribed is something right. that is really well, alarming. Same to with me. the opiate yeah. addictions. The right, same exactly. idea that But to very see. young kids, six years yeah. old. Well, we were doing a couple of interviews before we came over here and several of the reporters all were like, I'm on Adderall starting at seven, starting right. at six. Right. So what caused you to decline? And, and I want to know how you should, they, they just, you just felt she wasn't going to do well in school? Or? Well, no, I mean, originally when, yeah. because I just didn't like the idea of it. I right. didn't, I thought she was young. I didn't want 
her to be, you know, medicated. I thought, you know, we didn't need it. We tried alternative tutoring. We tried other things. But I think at that point, though, too, like entering high school, a lot of my other girlfriends had already started taking it and saying how helpful it was in their life. So. Mm -hmm. I also kind of went home and was like, it's helping them so much. I think I should give it a try. Right. Yeah. Right. It's interesting because, again, my, my son was the same thing. Um, and I was like, let him run around the playground. Just get him right. to stand up and run around the playground, and then he'll come and sit down. He'll get his. Well, I think all kids are different, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. We have four kids. They all have four different brains. Right. Uh, she was running around. She was doing karate. She right. was doing yeah, dance. She was doing swimming. She was doing all of that. She was highlighting the paragraph. She was. Uh, dancing, drawing, you right. know, doing everything. You're but some kids, <laughs> yeah. But some kids have struggled with memory. Some yeah. kids struggle with focus. Some kids need help, right? right. So, and so and about the other others, to do yeah. That. Well, now I think we hear. I remember the pressure, even and even now. And I was like, well, he's just not going to do well in school. Oh well. Right. And and yeah. and they keep saying, well, that's, you know, not good. And I said, well, he's a tall white rich man in America, I think he'll be fine. Um, but you know what I mean, I'm not, I'm not the best parent, but I do, drugs right. were the part I didn't want to. Right. Well, you but the know, pressure that's, is your, enormous. that's every parent's yeah, it's, uh, The pressure decision. is enormous yeah. to have people achieve. Well, I, I don't even know if it's to have them achieve. It's to help them focus in school. And as right. I said, every parent crosses this in their own way. But talk about and, the school, how they're set up, why? Does well, it, I think the schools are set up in ways, certainly, to teach in one way towards one kind of learning. Mm -hmm. And that may be good for her brother, and it wasn't good for her. Or mm -hmm. it may be good, not good for your son, but it could be good for somebody else's son. And I think understanding how your child learns, uh, ideally, I think this is one of our hopes of the film, that it will ignite a conversation, like maybe my kid is in the wrong school, we switch schools. Maybe I need to do more social emotional learning. Maybe if meditation were involved in this school, kids could learn in a different way. Maybe they need to be in a completely creative environment and not in a prep school. Or a maker these, school. That's they, something these are all different kinds right. of things that I think we, we're hearing a lot more about it. That said, there's a huge increase in this drug, particularly among women, and yes. particularly among women now in her age group, who are all trying to do startups, who are all trying to, you know, live perfect lives, have perfect bodies, get the perfect boyfriend, have kids, you know, uh, move out on their own, get out of the paycheck to paycheck thing. So I think, you know, certainly what's been interesting to me now that Christina's been in this whole health and wellness space is there are other alternatives. I don't think parents are told them or they're not educated about them and also you know you want your kid to be able to remember mm -hmm. do their school work and they're doing homework four or five hours a night right is that the right way i don't think so no it's not yeah it's really quite disturbing yeah and i think this has changed and certainly since you were in school yeah it's very different today Meaning, um, well, I think first of all, it's much more prevalent, mm -hmm. um, but I still don't think parents are educated as to the downsides mm -hmm. of it. Um, but I think there's also a movement, certainly, that I'm hearing a lot amongst parents saying, you know, I want alternative ways. I want my kid to be taught differently. Yeah. I, you know, people I hear starting schools looking for, you know, different ways to educate the kid as we become more aware of the brain, right. as we become more aware of how people learn. And what are the effects on the brain or really on the identity of a kid who doesn't, you know, do as well in specific school environment? What does that say to a child at a very young age yeah. that they can't keep what, up? Or? What kind of school, Christina, would you like to have gone to when you think about that? Because, you know, schools are done in the in absolutely the same way ever. No matter if yeah. they're a private school, public school, they're they're very much rote learning, right. memorization idiotic essays, you know, right. a lot of this stuff. And sometimes I do find when my kids show me some of their homework, I, I can't help but be truthful. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It won't matter later. Right. You should not do that. You should not complete that assignment. I'm like the best parent. <laughs> um, but I, and you it's hard not. to deny it. It's like, this won't help you in work. This will right. not. You need to learn how to do decision making. You need to do to work in teams. Yeah, you yeah. need to work in teams and stuff. What would you, what kind of environment would you have liked? Or what, how would you imagine to create a learning environment? Definitely a lot more creative. I mean, not as strict. We had math groups separated on like upper math, and then like the next class was like the dumb math group. Yeah, yeah. I would not have that. Okay. Um, that starts early. Too. Yeah, it yeah. starts early. But I would definitely, I mean, I did really well in my high school just because of the fact that it was, 
it was a very creative learning environment. Uh, projects were more like physical. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all about just writing and reading and taking tests. It was about projects, presentations, thinking out of the box, being creative, problem mm -hmm. solving. Um, those are things um, I would like in a school that I would want to send my kid to. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I wouldn't want to send my kid now, like after my experience, to a traditional. I mean, granted, if that if that was the school that worked best for him, that'd be fine. But I just hope that schools are more open to alternative learning styles and working with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All right, I think so that's really important because I talk to so many people, so many parents who mm -hmm. say, you know, the school system isn't set up for the way their kid learns, mm -hmm. you know, and if you have multiple kids, you learn that really quickly, but you also learn it you know, by the time third or fourth grade mm -hmm. has gone by mm -hmm. and already in their identity is landed, I'm smart, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I can keep up, I can't. And then We also don't give kids now much time for imagination right. and like creativity. Like kids are stuck at an iPad, they're stuck in their books, they're stuck doing like on the computer doing homework. In the article I sent you about giving kids play time and they come back and do much better on their tests. They, we have like no time, not even just for kids, but even in society today, because we're so hooked up 24 seven to just take a break and actually think, like think outside the box. Right. So the, the, uh, related to a tech addiction, this is a big yeah. discussion going on right now. Especially but, young kids. I just saw a thing right. put out by Common Sense Media the other day. It said over half of kids say they're completely addicted to mm -hmm. their smartphones. Right. And adults can't go an hour without picking them up. Hour? Yeah. Like 33 seconds. Yeah. I'm sitting here, I'm, touch, I'm getting you're here stroking touching my What will happen if I take it away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't put it. But I think that's what, you know, I like in the film. I like that several people bring up, you know, in a kind of a dreamy way, what are we losing? Right. What are we giving up by telling people they have to be on 24 7, that they have to get in the zone? Right. Um, I think we're losing a lot. Is it fair? to attack the tech companies is because they're getting a lot. Well, I think it's, a, it's, it's fair I mean, to their ask us at all. Right, their businesses all. are predicated on addiction, really. Like, right, but I mean, music. Wall Street, you know, we have kids in the film uh, mm -hmm. who talk about Wall Street and talking about what the, the hours that mm -hmm. they're working in the entertainment business. You know, mm -hmm. people are working 20 hours a day. And what is the, what's the collateral damage of that mm -hmm. when parents mm -hmm. can't play with their kids, where they can't be home, where they're not <laughs> even, you know, present? Yeah, I think that that's a well, really big issue. I was noticing issue. The Verge had a great story today about now South by South is another place you can look at your phone. Right. Um, it was a great story. I recommend uh, reading it. It's true. Um, what I've started to do, I actually don't look at it when I'm walking around, when I'm doing things like, but here, you, you know, the same thing where people are walking and looking at their phones at the same time. I've taken to going up behind people and yelling. Um, so that's when someone's, practice. no, it's, but it works. <laughs> Right, it works. I go up to them behind them and I say, when they're staring at their phones and walking, which I think is dangerous it at the same time, yeah. I go, hey! And they're like this, and I'm like, stop doing that. And then I keep I say going. it to people who I see on the elevator, like five people will get on, they'll all look at it, and I go, hello, <laughs> hi everybody, yeah. nice to see you. And everybody looks up and yeah. I'm like, you know, but we don't connect, yeah. I think, anymore. Yeah. And I think really we're, we're wired for connection. Right. We're not wired to connect in here. Right. We're wired to connect here. We're right. wired to connect here. Right. And I think, you know, for me, I've learned a lot of that from, mm -hmm. from Christina, who has really is focused on all the alternative ways to live your life. Right. And, and then I think what's so interesting in you and several of your other kids in your generation are saying, do I want to live like this? Do I want to work like my parents work? Do I want to be that person who can't put it down? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. All right, let's talk about the medical elements of it. Uh, doctor, why don't you get up? Um, I, want to, I want to ask you a question, and then we'll get some questions from the sure. audience, too, um, and talk a little bit about it. I'd love to know how working with Netflix went, because yeah. you were in the broadcast yeah. industry. Yeah, I've worked with HBO on most of my other documentaries, yeah. so this was our yeah. first experience. But we're cool now that we're, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Netflix. Yeah, they tell yeah. me. Yeah, they, they have buttons. This is cool. Look at That's our cool. We have buttons. Yeah. That's cool. You know Netflix is signing a deal with everybody, you know that? They're like, nine, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Um, <laughs> okay. it, it does seem okay. like it. It's like Netflix did this today, they, Ryan Murphy, they signed Shonda Rhimes, they're signing. Well, they're a good, really good You're company. an excellent company. Yeah, there we Can go. Talk about the medical elements of Yes, of, of so, so just, just to kind of... Just yourself. Yeah, so I'm Dr. Corey Bear. I'm actually yeah, in the documentary. Um, He's I'm, in the film. Yeah, I, I'm in the film. And... Um, I'm a practicing physician, but I'm also in the media. I'm the medical editor for NBC television. And so 
I have uh, a very, I'll stand over here, a very different kind of vibe about this because I actually do take care of patients. And one thing I don't want anybody to walk away and think is that, let me go back. I want everyone to walk away and think that this medicine is being overprescribed. And I want everyone to walk away and think that there are a lot of doctors out there that are prescribing the medicine um, and not following up, and there are kids that look like zombies out there. It's very yeah. important. Right. But we also have to remember that this is not something that is just, you know, I don't like school, or I don't really want to go to right. work, or I just have bad credit. <laughs> it's, it's not that. It is a genetic problem. In the prefrontal cortex of the brain, you have epinephrine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, dopamine, and serotonin. And when you have a little bit, of more, little bit more dopamine or one less receptor, then these things are a little bit off, okay? And so what happens is that you have a child who cannot necessarily pay attention. And this is a continuum. There's some children that have very severe ADHD, and there's some children that have very, very you know, very slight ADHD. But the problem is that by the time you get to that point, you've already been told that you're stupid in school when you realize that I really can't focus like the other kids. You realize the, uh, you, your self-esteem is low. So that's when the pressure comes. But we have to remember a lot of parents are very refractory when I explain to them we have to do a battery of testing and I go to their homes, I, I feature the movie because I go to the parents, to the house, I go to the school, I talk to the kids, I talk to their friends before I would make any diagnosis and I speak to um, a, other, two other doctors and make a, get a second opinion and they do the same for me so that we can be very sure if that patient right. needs a medicine. But the yeah. issue becomes, I tell a parent, you know, I think your child may need some medicine at eight years old. They're like, oh no, you know, my child and that stuff. We know that's really bad. All the rest of his friends are zombies and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, your child has a heart problem and I'm gonna give him this medicine and it's gonna cause him to be short. It's gonna cause him to have erectile dysfunction when he's 60 years old. It's gonna cause him to have all kinds of stuff. Oh, but it's his heart. Okay, well, I don't care what the side effects are. I just wanna make sure I want that heart to work. But the problem is your self-esteem and your uh, uh, ability to be uh, to achieve in this world, if you're not a tall, rich, white guy, okay, is based yeah. on your academic achievement. And so if done correctly, just like the cardiac medicine for your heart, there is a place. But the problem is that the place has now become a, an arena as opposed to an intimate gathering like this. I think what you're, he's also saying, right. that what she was, Christina mm -hmm. just said when you were describing what you go through, that's sure. a dream. Right. Yeah. Very few doctors like do that. No, no sure, it's very rare. They just, you walk in college, exactly. you walk in the door, yeah. I need it. It's a brute force it. yeah. prescription system. It, it, right, it's a, very, it's a very, what I do is very rare. But that's what, you know, we're starting the movement now to, to make sure that most doctors will, will really do this. I'm a, a professor at two universities, and we make sure that our students at Tulane and LSU and at Dillard University, we make sure our students have to go, hey, there you go, <laughs> shout out. We make sure that our students, all of them that actually have to be on the medicine, they have to come through our student health services to make sure that they are appropriately diagnosed by the time they get to college, and that's very rare. I think also rare. what's really important is what he's saying is that in all due respect, Respect, you know, other parents saying to other parents, you drug your kid right. is a shaming yes, thing, yeah, yeah. right? Sure. Yeah. And there are kids who literally, no matter how many hours they do their homework, they can't remember a thing. Right. They cannot yeah. remember a thing. Right. And if you understand the, the brain entire, the entire. and you understand the entire thing of the brain mm -hmm. and you understand it's way beyond executive functioning right. for some families, right? right. I think. W to shame people for trying to help their child. Right, let's talk about the uses it, of the positive. But I think that that's a really yeah. important thing right. that we have to be respectful of yeah. because for many children, just like the doctor was saying, they can't remember anything. It's right. way beyond a kid that's fidgeting. And, right. and, 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 so, and, right. and it doesn't go. that's more rare. That's a more rare. No, it's not. It's no, not. No, 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 it's not. No, so that, that, that's no, the thing that, that's yeah. the thing that we want to make that's sure that people important. understand. If you're at home right now, your house is a mess, you have poor credit, you can't keep a relationship, you can't keep a job, you need to get tested as a grown person. Because the, real, the situation is that you may have been thinking that all my life I just, I just can't get it together. 
I just can't focus. And that doesn't mean you need medicine. And that's the point. It doesn't mean you need medicine. Because every child that's on medicine in my clinic or even adolescent, they're all in counseling. Because you need coping skills and you need to be able to understand how to do these things so that you may not need medicine. And I think that's what you've been talking about, Christina, that, you know, medicine is one part of it. So is cognitive therapy. So is meditation. So is exercise. So is different learning environments. It's looking at a holistic child and, you know, trying to support them in the way that's supportive right. of right. them sure. and, and, so and their parents. So can about this idea? Because one of the things in Silicon Valley right now is nootropics. Um, yes. I don't know how many of you this idea of, uh, yes. they're very attractively marketed. Um, they they make you smarter. This uh, and it's it, some of it looks it's like, like limitless, marketing. like the limitless pill. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. and that which I think everyone sure. would love to be able to take <laughs> a pill sure. and be able to yes. be highly. I intelligent. actually don't. Really? Yeah. I have no interest in that. Actually, no, I, love I don't. Movie. Really? Yeah, I love the movie. Yeah, I, love yeah. I think Bradley Cooper's. Bradley hot, Cooper's cool. I have no uh, interest right. in but, taking but that. It's a big push, and so I have a lot of people. Yeah. Like, along yeah. with the fasting, about the sure. various things. medical that foods, really, prescription yeah. medical foods, FDA approved. But approved. that's it. Also, kind of, I want to live. Right. I want longevity. I want to live. New tropics are tapping into like your right. whole brain. The capacity. potential yeah. exactly. brain that you know right. that we are using whatever for which yeah. is apparently. Uh, not true. Uh, right, but we true. also, there's a huge surge of like, I want to make my brain last a lifetime, not just right. my body. I want to be operating at maximum level. Like, I've right. met a couple of people who've come to me and said, I've been diagnosed with adult ADHD mm-hmm. or adult ADD. I'm 71. I can't remember anything. I said, go see a neurologist. Exactly. Right. Go see a neurologist. And right. that's a big thing that I'm doing in the Alzheimer's space is right. encouraging people to go and get a cognitive baseline, go yeah. and try to understand your brain. Kind of, I think as a society, we're way behind. Yeah. Not right? the one that Trump got. N- not brains. that cognitive thing that Trump got, right? Well, he got a cognitive yeah, baseline. Yeah, but, no, he did. Yeah, yeah he did, but he not did. that one. No, that one is yeah. you can do yeah. all kinds that are available. Better. You can go and see a neurologist and get, <laughs> just like you get a mammogram, just like you get a sure. colonoscopy, begin to get a cognitive baseline. And sure. the more we begin to understand that nobody's brain in this room is the same right nobody processes information the same nobody's my, my, brain operates right. the same the point i was making that with neutropics is that i think this is going to be a huge yes uh, area that right. people are trying to perfect their brains in the way yes. they may do exercising how is is that okay obviously it's subject to marketing schemes and things sure, like that sure. but, and it's like the diet world like that right. that was the one Internet that just got away but we're right. you but we're yeah. using that for adhd right now so some of the, the medicines uh, there's a company that makes a, uh, a a central fatty acid omega-3 that you know you take the fatty acid by just taking a pill theoretically and you think that that's really working for you but most of the time you're really going to get rid of that in either your stool or your urine so the uh, one company has linked it to a very small carrier protein so it can cross the blood brain barrier so that you can actually get the omega-3 inside the brain where it really is necessary and so that's an fda prescription medical food and so the nootropics are just basically like that things that we know the brain needs and put all those things in one thing and then test you pre and test you six months later, six months later, and your your outcomes are generally better. And it's I think a lot of it has to do because we eat poorly. Yeah. All of us, you know, we, we know we're trying to be as organic as possible, but every now and then people go and eat cows and all those types of things, right? So the problem is that we don't really have a great diet. And so when we use a supplement, we think just a regular multivitamin is going to work. And that's not actually going to work because most of that is just chalk anyway. And so you have to really get to the point where you're using some of these nootropics and some of these medical foods that actually penetrate the brain so that you can prevent Alzheimer's, prevent cognitive decline. Because just like we were talking about, these these uh, baseline cognitive tests, they are very good, especially when you get uh, in an advanced age but there's some that are even more so that we can narrow down right. what part of the brain is not but I think functioning. Well, and I think what's important about this film is it right. begins, I hope, it, it, it begins that discussion for parents who have kids who are little, for mm-hmm. parents who have kids who are in high school, for your generation to think about, you know, yeah. kind of their brain. Mm-hmm. How not only their brain, but why are they doing it? What, why? Are you, why are you doing it? So a lot of times why, like when I talk to my friends, like why do you need to do that? They're like, I need to do. I need to catch up with work. I need. To do, I need to do this. I need to be successful. And it's like, okay, but what? Take a look at success. Like, what do you define as success? And one Are of the side effects is yeah. sl- is being slim. You lose weight on a stimulant. 
you know, and if you, and, and so a lot of young ladies are like, well, I want to be slim. So wait a minute, you mean I can take a pill, be quote unquote smarter and skinnier? Sign me up. Or get, make more money. Make more so money. I talk and all to a lot of the guys, if they take that so they work harder and yeah. move up in their positions, and I'm like, that's so it's a social, it's, it's, it's much, even much more than a, a social thing now than the actual outcomes that we're trying to get, you know? Right. It, it's all right, so I want to get to the, the concept though, because this is, has, it's not a new thing, diet pills, you know, back in the 50s, there were those, those were essentially stimulants. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, what, in this society, it's ever moving faster around social media, around right. constant connection, around you know, I literally can't get in the shower because I think Trump's going to do something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what's he do? Oh, my God. Do you meditate? Uh, I try. I'll yeah. be honest with you. I'm not very good at it. Yeah, I, have I a wasn't monkey. either. Right. I found, uh, you know, in my own life, I found uh, that, you know, having tools to disconnect right. and connect with other people was really important. And putting boundaries up in my life yeah. that disconnected me from technology, that made me think about again what is power what is success what am i really doing what kind of parent am i am i connect do i know this woman different from her sister and her brothers mm -hmm. what does she need mm -hmm. um, i think you need you need time for that right. you know you need to disconnect to get present in well, another I think person's one of the life that we've talked this where your your religion has been that too of my faith yeah, faith. I yeah. Think, yeah it's it's, uh, it's been a huge component in my own life uh, also, just you know, having four children, uh, being a working mom, and understanding that the four human beings that are at that table are four different human beings that require different parenting, mm -hmm. different education styles, different learning styles, different personalities. And if I'm on that device 24-7, I'm not in this human being. Right. What's fascinating is that meditate, people you do their meditation devices on their devices. Yeah. Because there's I, so I many good ones. I found, and I was really scared. Well, I do too. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do your headspace. Headspace, yeah. Head space, yeah. yeah. But it's been there's really helpful for you. Yeah, right? incredibly. And I used to have, like, terrible debilitating anxiety also. And it's been, like, life-changing, actually. Mm -hmm. And nobody talked to you in school about that. No. Yeah. You know? And I yeah. think that's yeah. really what you've been talking about, which I think is so important. It really takes a holistic approach. It's about nutrition, right? right? It's about meditation. It's about more creative learning styles. So I want to finish up because I want to get questions from the audience. But what, this is a, a topic about uh, that people who have the means to think about these things, who have the means to take time with their kids. But people who are working, who are working from job to job, to living yeah. from paycheck to paycheck, bad nutrition they don't know. how do we get that because the easiest thing is to hand it feels like 1984 it's so my hand on the pill and calm well, I think them down by having discussions like this right i think by you know talking about well you know uh, and i'm a big believer in working in the women's empowerment space and doing the last big documentary i did was called paycheck to paycheck about right. uh, the new face of poverty in the united states is that of a working I woman you came up to me at george hammer saying about why can't they digitize an app put apps for mothers do you remember why do they have to get in a in a, a bus and go downtown to get there. Yeah, their well, that was also about food stamps food and why stamps, we yeah. can't re, uh, reimagine stuff. food stamps and make fresh fruits and vegetables available. And I looked at that. I tried to put all these programs together when I was First Lady of California because people who are eligible for food stamps or child care, energy assistance are the same, and government is not innovative in how we give it to people and how we make it accessible because people don't have time. Uh, you know, working women who are living paycheck don't have time to go from place to place to access the, various, the programs that right. they are actually uh, eligible for. But I think beginning these conversations, and there's a lot of pioneering uh, pediatricians that, uh, um, you know, in San Francisco and all around the country who are looking at trauma, who are looking at meditation at a very young age, who are looking at learning styles and what is actually keeping a child from learning. In many cases, it's poor nutrition. In many cases, it's a learning disability. In some cases, it's trauma. In some cases, it's abuse. So I think um, you know, having a film like this, I think, ignites a conversation about uh, what are we doing and what's available to some groups and not to others. And when you get to college, what about the black market? And how do we deal with pain? How do we deal with this anxiety and energy that's an epidemic? And are we set up as families, as school districts, 
to deal with children who are coming in who are anxious, proficient at uh, technology and can't sit at their seats, and also who have learning styles that just don't fit our education system as it is today. So, last question, then we'll get some questions to the audience. Um, what was it like with, with Netflix? You had been, you've been in network news. Mm -hmm. um, you don't think of that that way. You, you, you have a very different way you looked at media right now, but your mom came up in a, a very traditional system of the anchor all the way up to network. Now you're working with Netflix. So, well, I still work at NBC, right. and I still do pieces for the Today Show a lot. And so I think uh, this was, uh, as I said, this was Christina's idea. This was her baby. And you wanted to do it at Netflix because yeah. that's where you were getting a lot of your information. Yeah. And I so, was watching a lot of documentaries on Netflix, didn't find one on Adderall, and I was like, let's go to right. Netflix and do this. And it was interesting because when we pitched it to Netflix, they were like, really, let us kind of see. And uh, several of the people in decision-making places came back and like, oh my God, I had a conversation with my kids and all my kids are on it. I didn't even know that. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I think it's, Good you know, and, no, but I think yeah. it's, you know, your kid goes to college, you don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they're, I shipped my child years ago, but go ahead. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Two. Two. Yeah. And do they learn the same? No. No. Are they no. in the same school? Yes, they shouldn't be. Okay. I wouldn't have been in school at all if it was my choice, but my... My ex likes school, so I wouldn't have them just wander around and do whatever they want. Wander around. Well, there yeah. you go. They, you yeah. probably they could be here. They could be. They yeah. should be. Why not? Yeah, they learn a lot more. There you right. Go. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Questions from the audience, please. Questions. So you guys. Whoa. <coughs> hello. Let's not. So you guys have been talking a lot about uh, the medication on young people and, and, and you also briefly mentioned it on Alzheimer's when we were walking in. And I was wondering if you had thought about anything or heard of, uh, I think it was Alan, Alan Kurzelich or something like that, has uh, the use of video games going through and treating uh, issues such as uh, Neuroracer is one that he's actually going through and having FDA be approved for a treatment for um, ADHD and also has done lab tests using similar systems for neuroplasticity in Alzheimer patients. Yeah, there, there's a lot of kind of research going on and I actually just did a piece at the Brain uh, Center in Dallas about kids with terrible social anxiety working through video games, if I understand. Also with autism. autism right. and, and Asperger's. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right, but also just kids with incredible anxiety, right? And they were having huge success uh, with um, video games, if, uh, if that's what I understood the question to be about. Is that, is that what you said? Because I couldn't hear you exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I've done a couple stories on that. I think that's kind of new. I think it's interesting, but, you know, I don't uh, know that much about it. It, it is around autism. Autism seems yeah. to be certain kinds of video games, not other right, kinds. Right, but also I, the story I did was about kids with terrible social anxiety. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. and PTSD, yeah. Yeah, so what's interesting about that, it's interesting because video games right now are under attack uh, by the president this week, right? Yeah. Didn't he right. have? Yeah. Uh, which is no, some, nothing new, by the way. I mean, we can remember. Yeah. There's been always a video game attack. And, you know, if you, if you have kids who play them, my kids play them all the time, like Fortnite and some others, they really, they're crazily addicted. I, what, what are you yeah. laughing? <laughs> what? What's funny? Hey, you're funny. It's like, my kids shouldn't be in the same school. They play video games nonstop. No, they're they don't play nonstop. They want to play nonstop. They're really nonstop. <laughs> no, I'm, they're very nice. They're very I'm nice children. Sure. I would prefer if they were wandering around. <laughs> I would ah, like ah, them to. No, you would like them to be. They're yeah. too well behaved. The, they're the too well behaved. The and the... Um, one of them asked me, should I go to the gun march? I'm like, fuck yes. What are you asking? Well, I could get in trouble. I'm like, what? Like, just go. Like, leave school. You say it like that? Yeah. F, yes? Yes, you yeah, do. I'm yeah. sorry. That's, yeah, that's okay. I was just curious. I was just curious. Yes, I do. It's great. Yeah, I'm going to introduce you. They're very lovely young I'd men. like to meet them. Nice. Yeah. How old are they? Uh, 15 and 12. Uh, oh. Almost about to turn. Their oh, birthdays wow. are next week. That's an, I, I think that we should have, maybe the next film we should talk about boys, because yeah. I think there's a yeah. huge... Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, a huge big uh, issue around boys. Yeah. Um, I, I've got some nice ones. But yeah, you know, nice ones. Yeah, we have uh, nice ones too. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. So All right, another well question. Done. Question right here. I just got my uh, 23 and Me back, so I'm right. wondering maybe the doctor can answer if there's uh, sure. something genetic that could tell me on some service like 23 and Me to say, yes, you need medicine for ADHD or HD or something like that. 
Um, before you start, um, 23andMe got in a lot of trouble because they started saying things that, like, they made some uh, things around uh, breast cancer and proclivity for this, and they were pushed back a couple of years ago by the FDA, for those who don't know. And just yeah. this week, they got approval for uh, to have more diagnostic ability. They were very diagnostic at the beginning. Like, we had them, we debuted them at All Things D, and they compared my uh, spit to Rupert Murdoch's, which was a, a unique experience. We're not related. Um, and, um, but it was, it used to be like that, and then a lot of these companies were pulled back, and now it seems like the FDA is thinking more around Cardia. There's a company called Cardia. There's a whole bunch of them, but this, the, the, the genetic testing will move that way. Yes, and, and I think it's really important that, that you brought that up because we talked about the genetic component of this. Um, there aren't really studies. We, we can do time motion uh, functional MRIs to see what's going on in your brain and, and, and do the testing cognitively and see if you're firing the way that you should. And we can see that. It's very expensive and people don't like to do it. But what we do have tests are tests on, what we can do very readily in the office, is if you do have ADHD and we're trying to decide what medicine that you would be on, some people are very fast metabolizers and some people are methylphenidate people, some people are amphetamine people. And so sometimes neither one of them will work and you have to use an, another type, but we can do a test and say, we're not gonna even start you on something like that, um, a, a methylphenidate or, or a, an amphetamine, if it, you're genetically not predisposed to be able to, to metabolize it well. And one thing, other, other thing too, is that we're talking about the kids and, and how uh, the video games and this stuff are, are really affecting them. I want people just to remember that video games don't have to be shooting video games. It can be things that make you pay attention, and, and, and that's really important. But more than that, the 24-hour news cycle, I think, has really changed the entire way we all do anything. I have patients that literally come to my office or go to one of my partner's offices, and then they find out one piece of medical information. They have one thing. And then they go home, and then they Google the whole thing, and they have all the same information that the doctor does, but they have none of the education. So that means that all night, they're freaking out, like, I'm going to have cancer, I have cancer, I have cancer, I have cancer. And 20 years ago, that did not exist. You couldn't get that information unless you went to a library, a, a medical library. So that 24-hour news cycle where you get all that information at your fingertips and the children are getting all bombarded 24 hours a day with news, and, uh, and their parents are too. You know, when we were growing up, news was at 6, news is at 10, you chose one, and maybe in the morning. I now you other, get every breaking news. I think the other thing that's really important, and I think uh, it's probably a good example, probably all three of us have ADD. I saw you watching your phone. I was going to show you a picture of my delightful son. While he was talking. Yeah. That's ADD. Yeah. <laughs> I, call it, I call it multitasking. Yes, I know. No, there's no such thing. The brain doesn't multitask. I am a fine multitask. The brain doesn't multitask. But the point is, is that, you know, people with ADD, right, do well, mm -hmm. can do well. And I think one of the things that... You know, great artists had ADD, right? You, you've sent yeah. like great painters and musicians and all of these creative minds that are out there. And I think that's also another thing that we can do a better job of talking to our children about, of all of these people who do well, that don't do well in conventional schools, right. who don't do well uh, memorizing a textbook this yeah. thick. Yeah, right? about 30% of all Fortune 500 CEOs have ADD. If you use it, and a lot of people in tech, you can, it, it is more in the Asperger's area, but there's, they, they use that in a different way, which I think is interesting. So brain. let's finish up. We just have one more minute left. Um, what are the positives of using these drugs, if at all? I do, when you think about it, you know, you, you did a lot of the, oh no, this makes you do this, I was on it, I couldn't. Are, are there any, do you see any positives if it's used in a, in a way that's more informed, I guess? Um, the doctor and the, and the patient. I think obviously, like to each their own, everyone's individual. So, for if someone finds it really helpful in their life, that's great for them. Um, they should definitely use it. In my life, my experience, it was really helpful for me. Um, like I said, I did really well in school. Um, made me at least feel really proud of myself during that time, and got a lot of positive feedback. Um, I think though that. 
it's really hard to manage it just because it's a prescribed as like a on needed basis and it's really hard when you yeah. are taking something on an as needed basis to continue it on an as needed basis. So, I mean, if someone can continue it without getting addicted to it and they find it really helpful, I think that's great. Great for them, they should do that. Um, I think it's really hard though to take it that way. To not to use it. Yeah. yeah. And I think the good, the good thing is, is that bosses get people to come work for them who are working seven days a week, 20 hours a day. Right. And who are in the zone, who are on who it, who, yes, who say that. yes to everything and do it. And, uh, and I think that in and of itself, right, breeds this competition to other people looking at them going like, yeah. if I yeah. want to move up. Yeah. And is there any positive, because in the last six months, I've literally been offered the newest thing, one of the many new things in Silicon Valley is ayahuasca. They love ayahuasca these yes. days for some reason. Journey. Journey, whatever. The, my, the concept of mind altering. And, you know, you'll have them come and do, Kara, come do ayahuasca with me. I'm like, never in my life will I do ayahuasca with you. Um, but the, the concept of mind altering, it's, go, it's going to move forward no matter how, whatever. Well, I think as people become more and more aware of their brain, as they become more and more interested in longevity, and you know, I hear my kids sometimes go like, Steve Jobs did it and he imagined Apple. Wow, <laughs> you know, so I think that there's a lure it's to that. To you, right, right that, that, that if you could break through or have an experience or, you know, people with PTSD and certain trauma, mm -hmm you know, microdosing of LSD, all of these other things, ecstasy. I think we have a, are in need of a national conversation about what's a Schedule One drug, what's a Schedule Two drug, what does the FDA approve, what did they not approve, what are the warnings. Um, like stricter regulations on all that. Right, and, and, and what are the benefits? You know, many people say they have tremendous benefits to microdosing LSD. You know, and for depression or post-traumatic stress, and I think it just understanding the complexity of the brain, the effect of trauma on the brain and the body, the effect of poverty on the brain and the body, the effect of women and men, uh, hormones and the brain, all of these things. And so people will be in search of something to help them be clearer, handle their trauma, be able to see things that they never imagined. I think, you know, that's limitless. All right, on that note, Christina Schwarzenegger, Maria Shriver. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.